This evening on The Update. Development of the nation. No region will be left behind, Baumia assures. Housing security personnel. Government commissions 1.3 million Ghana cities housing project for soldiers. GCFM debunks money squandering claims. Firm to soon settle clients, Dr. Indum. Inconsistent power supply. Power outages only temporary, energy minister. Government bans imports of excavators, banned to take effect on May 1st. Gene editing tech to control mosquitoes, researchers to make mosquitoes less attracted to humans. Nipsey Hussle murderer suspect nabbed, Los Angeles police identifies shooter. Good evening, you're watching the update on DGN. My name is Lady Pulos. Vice President Dr. Mohamedou Baumia has assured Ghanaians that no region will be left behind in the development process of the nation. According to him, each area will continue to have its fair share of growth and development. He made this known on Sunday in Wale Wale, where he observed the 7th annual Malid celebration to mark the birth of Prophet Muhammad. The Vice President was with the National Chief Imam, Sheikh Osman Nuhu Shabutu, Sheikh Abdul Wadud Haruna Kisisi, and Sheikh Mustafa Ibrahim. He reiterated President Nana Ado Dankwa Kofo Ado's resolve to fulfill his promises to the people of Ghana. Meanwhile, he observed the need for Ghanaians to live in harmony regardless of their differences in religious beliefs. A 1.368 million Ghana city housing unit for the Ghana Navy has been commissioned in Tema. Following the success completion of the construction of 168 housing units at Community 3 in Tema for the use of the Bureau of National Investigations, BNI, the government contracted Amandi Holdings Company to construct 368 units which contain 128 three-bedroom and 240 two-bedroom units in 23 blocks named Paradise Barracks. The Ghana Navy is the only service in GAF that does not have a proper barracks anywhere in the country, but a few units in the Tema and Takradir. Thus, the Paradise Barracks becomes the maiden modern barracks for the service. The non-existence of the barracks has negatively affected the mobilization of personnel to emergency responses, in effect undermining operational effectiveness. Speaking at the commissioning, Vice President Baumia observed that government's main consideration for the continuation is that the community matters a great deal in the support of families and it is therefore prudent for personnel of GAF have decent and better accommodation without the stress of where and how to find comfortable residences for their dependents. He intimated that the modernization of facilities and the improvement of accommodations for GAF in military barracks will contribute positively to the morale and esprit de corps of security services. He hinted that in a fortnight, government would roll out a program that calls Barracks Regeneration Program, starting from Tamale in the northern region to invest in rehabilitation and upgrading of living quarters nationwide. Dr. Baumar also revealed that 10,000 housing units are to be constructed for GAF, police, prisons, immigration service, national fire service and the judicial service and that government is in talks with Amandi Holdings for phase three of the security services housing scheme soon to be kick-started. On his turn, the Minister of Defence, Dominic Nitiwu, urged all traditional authorities not to demand compensation from government after they gift lands willingly for GAF's development. Gold Coast Fund Management, GCFM, on Monday said it has invested more than 2 billion Ghana cities in infrastructure and commercial projects for the GET Fund, Cocobod, Road Fund, District Municipal Assemblies and private companies. The company is therefore working with quiet assertiveness with government agencies and private sector organizations to pay what is due to Gold Coast so that it would use the funds to pay the emergency needs and interest areas of clients. A statement signed by Dr. Pa Ekwesi Ndum, the chairman of Group Ndum, debunked the allegation that investment of clients had been sent abroad. Dr. Ndum explained that it would be more prudent to allow investments to run their course before calling them. Many people would lose money should the company redeem its investments before they gain full value, or should it sell its assets. The GCFM said it was because of the astute decisions and the benefits over the years that the clients had made it the biggest fund manager in the country. The company has since last October run into some liquidity problems 
largely over the high debts owed to it and panic withdrawals by clients following the collapse of men's gold and some investment companies. The Securities and Exchange Commission also directed it to halt its structured finance product. GCFM says it's working with the regulator to roll out alternative valuable products for its clients under the scheme while it paid off over a period those who would insist on opting out. It has so far paid more than 60 million cities to clients. Energy Ministry says recent intermittent power outages experienced by domestic and commercial power users to the total shutdown of the Ghana gas pipeline system is to ensure effective interconnection with the West Africa gas pipeline company, WAPCO. The tie-in of the two company systems is to ensure reverse flow of the surplus of gas at the Aboise Thermal Power Enclave to Tema Power Enclave for power generation. This is expected to increase the country's natural gas capacity from 120 million standard cubic feet SCF of gas per day to 330 million SCF per day. The interconnection would also take the burden on government for having to pay $400,000 penalty daily to the contractors for delays. Addressing a news conference in Accra on Monday to update the public on the intermittent power outages, Dr. Benjamin Asante, the chief executive officer of Ghana Gas, said on Saturday, March 30th, Ghana Gas shut down its system for effective interconnection of its pipeline system with WAPCO for the next 10 to 12 days. He explained that the pipelines of the two companies had to be shut down and depressurized to enable them to take out the flammable gas from the system to facilitate the interconnection process. Dr. Asante added that the other equipment and facilities, such as the gas regulator, heaters, metering and piping devices, were supposed to be modified in order to meet the intended purpose. Mr. William Oreku Edu, a Deputy Minister of Energy in charge of power, said government wanted to reduce the barest minimum, the disruption of the power supply to power consumers in the country. Mr. Edu, on behalf of the government, apologised to Ghanaian power consumers for the recent power outages and assured that it was doing all things possible to bring the supply of electricity to normalcy. Meanwhile, the country has been forewarned to expect some more power outages for the next 21 days. The government has placed a temporary ban on the importation of excavators. The ban, which is expected to take effect from May 1, 2019, forms part of government's efforts to combat illegal mining, popularly known as Galamze. Minister of Transport Kweke Ofori Asiyama announced the ban in a statement dated April 1, 2019. According to the statement, at its sitting on 27 March, Cabinet placed a temporary ban on the importation of excavators. It explained that this has become necessary following government's decision to regulate the use of excavators, especially in its efforts to combat illegal mining phenomenon popularly referred to as Galamze. The statement observed that the Trade Ministry and the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority GRA, have been taking note of the ban. Well, it would be recalled that the Ministry of Transport served notice on March 12th that it will go by March 31st, 2019, go after mining companies that have refused to register all their earth-moving vehicles, including bulldozers and excavators, but using them for operations. The Ministry was of the view that the practice was in violation of the law. A statement issued and signed by Mr. Ofori Asiyama at the time explained that the Driver Vehicle and Licensing Authority DVLA was mandated by law to license and register all motorized vehicles but noted that this has been flouted by owners of some of these vehicles who are using them for mining sites. As a result, the Ministry gave owners of excavators up to March 31, 2019 for such persons to register them with the DVLA if they have not done so, indicating that it is part of efforts to sanitize and regularize mining operations in the country. Researchers are making headway in the United States in a discovery that could dramatically reduce the spread of mosquito-borne diseases. In the US, researchers have genetically modified mosquitoes to make humans less attracted to them. Female mosquitoes have been long known to use an array of sensory information to find people to bite. They can sense exhaled carbon dioxide from as far as 10 meters away, as well as been able to detect body odor, heat, and moisture. Scientists have identified a gene known as IR8A expressed in the mosquito's antenna. This gene appears to allow female mosquitoes, the ones that suck blood, to smell lactic acid, a particular acidic vapor in human sweat. 
So what happens when you change the acidic component in human sweat? Well, using advanced CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology, the researchers were able to disrupt that gene, making the female Aedes aegypti mosquitoes significantly less interested in human. Matthew De Janeiro, a mosquito neurobiology researcher at Florida International University, states that removing the function of IR8A removes approximately 50% of host-seeking activity. The genetically modified mosquitoes were therefore less likely to detect and bite humans, making them much less likely to spread mosquito-borne diseases such as malaria and Zika fever. This genetic modification has huge potential health benefits that can combat a species that spreads diseases that kills millions of people each year. This latest research is not only focused on the potential of crossbreeding them with wild populations, but researchers also say their work can also offer a more advanced understanding of how mosquitoes hunt and feed on their human targets and will allow them to develop improved mosquito repellents. These could include life-saving perfumes or scents that would disrupt mosquitoes' sense of smell and protect people from being bitten. The World Health Organization earlier this year warned that an emerging resistance to insecticides could lead to a large increase in malaria cases and mortality. Moreover, the effects of climate change could create more hospitable breeding environments that is expected to hamper control efforts. This is all the more reason why such innovative insect control methods like these developed by Florida researchers are more to become increasingly important. He called for peace. He called for justice. We're calling upon whoever killed Nipsey to turn yourself in. A suspect has been named in the shooting death of Nipsey Hussle, the Los Angeles Police Department announced Monday night, shortly after a memorial to the rapper ended in a stampede that injured multiple people, including two critically. Eric Holder, 29, is wanted for homicide, the LAPD announced early on Tuesday. Hustle was shot Sunday near a clothing store he owned in Los Angeles. In a statement, police said Holder walked up to Hustle and two other men as they stood outside a business in a strip mall on West Slauson Boulevard. He fired multiple times at them and then ran into a nearby alley where a vehicle driven by an unidentified female was waiting for him, police said. Holder entered from the passenger side and the vehicle fled. Well, we do hope justice is served. He was doing so much for the community. He was an artist that, that really cared and that really always came back to where he was rooted from. I've never been like all the all over somebody like this, like a rapper, you know what I mean? And it was more, he was more than just a rapper. He is someone who put our community on the map. Um, people thought that our community was just about violence. Um, and Nipsey put a change to that. He was willing to partner to bring things to this community that we are now going to lose. And that'll be all for today's update, but do well to visit our website at dailyguynetwork.com for more news. Or follow us on social media via Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at The Daily Guy Network for more stories in and around the world. And don't forget, while you're online, you can also get interactive with me at Lady Pulos on Instagram. The update was brought to you by Diamond Cement and powered by Press Express. My name is Lady Pulos. Enjoy your evening.